Good afternoon, this is Ronald Allen, Managing Change Through Effective Communications. And today's topic, today's topic, because I've got some not so good news, um, is tighten up your sphincter muscle. Tighten up your sphincter muscle. Some of you may have seen the movie Flight with Denzel Washington and some other very illustrious actors. And in towards the beginning, they're taking off and he, Denzel Washington, is the captain of the plane, he's with a co-pilot, and they run into some turbulence, I'll bet life. And he says, when the crosswinds hit the plane, he says, that will get your sphincter muscle in. So let me give you a quick um, description of what that is for those who do not know. But as animals, and I know some have an, uh, an uh, a dislike for my using of that term, but we are animals. At the bottom of your spine, the sphincter muscle, which would typically turn into a tail, is, um, shall I say, uh, removed um, through biology, through our DNA, through the fact that we uh, no longer need that over the de decades. So the sphincter muscle um, is that part of our body that would typically form a tail. And it's a circular muscle that normally maintains constriction of a natural body passage or orifice and which relaxes as required by normal psychological functioning. Now, what's interesting about this and the fact that I got some very bad news <laughs> is that um, a couple of weeks ago, I also got not such great news. This is a progress, right? And as you can see behind me, this is my wood pile, right? This is my wood pile. I have been cutting up wood because um, I got discouraged. I got uh, down on myself. And so I'm going to show you some more wood. <laughs> and you'll, I'll get to the point of uh, tighten up your sphincter muscle in a moment. But it all leads up to this. So this is some more wood that I've cut up um, in, in trying to uh, redirect my energy and my frustration. Um, and also, in fact, it is also a business opportunity where in my neck of the woods, uh, people still burn wood. They have it in inserts. They have, in our case, an open fire. And even, of course, you may have seen people buying those um, hearths that they burn the wood on a raised platform or a patio, um, obviously not in a co-op or a condo, but <laughs> in a single uh, family, single residence, uh, you can do that within limits. Um, with the exception of a good friend of mine, Richard Barker, who uh, can literally burn a house down in his backyard. He owns a mini farm. I think it's about a quarter of an acre, half an acre. So the issue here in terms of tighten up your sphincter muscle, and I think it's fair to say that many of us who uh, are finding the second, if not third wave of lockdowns, instructions, um, a challenge, right? They're, we're finding it a challenge. Whether it's uh, the fact that you're being laid off, whether the fact that the uh, payroll protection funding obviously has now ceased and nothing's going to happen until January, maybe even late January to February, what are you doing to redirect that frustration, to refocus yourself? Um, I'm not going to give you a bunch of motivational scripts. I'm going to talk to you from the heart. As I said, and I started off with, uh, I've got bad news um, and I have to uh, ante up and kick in as, uh, who is it? Morgan Freeman said in glory. Um, yes, it will get your sphincter muscle <laughs> to tighten up. <laughs> and uh, every time you go to bat, uh, you have to have your game face on. You've got to be in the zone. So what I'm doing uh, from the information that I've received um, is to push more aggressively with learning my craft, reaching out to other people across the platforms um, and looking for those who are as hungry or, or are as eager 
um, and wish to better manage their state. I'm not going to use the word control because control intends absolute, tends to believe that we are actually able to control things indefinitely. Whereas manage, I can do that. It's a state of mind. I'll give you some examples from uh, some of the work that I'm doing. Uh, working with some youth and their non-compliance, which I'm starting to recognize, is because people are not taking the time out. Let me straighten the old hat up, right? You know what I mean? Like, got to straighten the old hat. Come from East End of London, you know, Southwest 17 and all. Um, sorry for that divergent <laughs> personality jumping out. <laughs> um, not a good day, but I'm going to do the FaceTime because I think it's important to recognize that we're not all in a great spot when we're doing these uh, motivational and or um, encouraging videos and chats. We have come from challenging positions. We've come through and working through them. And I think sharing that gives certainly uh, a very human perspective to our work, knowing that even though we're studying the technicals and fundamentals, and you know I always say that, right? The real work is where the rubber has to meet the road, where you wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning and everything that you have been taught, your whole social construct doesn't make sense. The belief in government, the uh, assimilation to culture, social, theological, to the things that we have been taught that life should follow, uh, it ain't following. <laughs> Right? It's not following. Things are not going your way. Now, we all know when things are fine, we can make outlandish statements and we can certainly encourage others. Are we as brave, are we as courageous when things are not going our way that we can still come out in public and acknowledge that? Not in a milk sap, woe is me, um, help me in that fashion. Moreover, bringing solutions and asking for guidance, for assistance. So going back to the youth I was just beginning to talk about, uh, this one gentleman had expressed to us that he didn't feel that he was part of the conversation, the initiation of a responsibility or even a request that's made of him, right? So whether it's house, chores, responsibilities, whether it's his education, um, getting ready for high school, college, next steps, whether it's uh, completing assignments, whether it's going out and doing shopping, because those are responsibilities that, believe it or not, a lot of people shirk. A lot of people don't put the effort in in order to optimize those opportunities. Well, in asking a series of questions, I found out that his real frustration was something entirely different. Are we taking the time to really identify, even to ourselves, what it is that we want? What is the outcome? What is the result of achieving, putting in that energy, putting in those hours that we expect, that we desire? And are those really end results that can help us sustain our lifestyle? Is it that our lifestyle needs to be adjusted? In some cases, we find that um, the, the frustration we're experiencing is because we have one belief off to, let's say, the left, but in reality, the challenge is uh, in, in ourselves, in our own inability to take on um, responsibility, to understand and re recognize that we don't have that level of competence, that skill, and we have to go outside ourselves. You know, you've heard the expression, get out of your own way, right? Well, that's what it requires. And at any age, you know, the, what I love about that, that conversation, I'm going to take a little walk here in my yard. Um, I love the conversation where people say, at any age, just go for it. Uh, don't let age hold you back. Um, be all you can be, do what you want to do. You can be what you want. 
only to the extent that you believe and have the passion and are seeking out the resources and are asking in the right environments, in the right communities, the right people for help, for support, for guidance. Our system primarily does not support an older generation seeking to engage in new activity. Oh, we'll do that in a hospice center. We'll do that in a long-term care center. We'll do that in a community of seniors. What if we could take that frustration, that need to pull in our sphincter muscle, and have a conversation, not to direct younger people, and in some cases not even to educate them, but rather pull out their perspective on how they would address a situation and then having a conversation around that. A lot of people in their respective professions believe that what they've learnt, what they're doing, and certainly some of the uh, typical challenges are set in stone. This is how it's done. This is how uh, an academic, this is how someone who's gone before me has found results. Well, does that mean that's the only way? Does that mean that you can't think of a different combination of inputs that when mixed together will give you, give you the individual the right answers? Take for example, and this is true of people um, maybe even 20 years younger than myself, we enter into a field that we wish to study and we bring with us a set of experiences, instruction, and even capabilities. Now, we look at this new set of information to say, this will give me what I want. This will help me be a better person. This will help me manage my states. This will help me uh, achieve my outcomes. And then we seem to hang on to that as the new uh, holy grail, if I can use that term, right? Well, this is what I've learned. I'm in a challenge. I need to acquire new knowledge. I need to uh, develop new skills. Someone or you've stumbled on a new process. And somehow we fall back into the same challenge of saying or believing this is going to deliver for me. And it may very well do that. At the same time, maybe there's a better alternative. And what am I saying? What am I alluding to? Well, if we keep acquiring knowledge and we find that that knowledge moves us a little closer, makes us a little bit more comfortable, makes us a little bit more aware of the overall forces that we are challenged with on a daily basis, then shouldn't we be also looking for additional information, um, other people's experiences that can continue to broaden our perspective, as I've used the term many times, an eclectic perspective. So when it comes to tighten that sphincter muscle, instead of looking at the problem, which I did for a while, <laughs> and then I started cutting wood, <laughs> And I use that cutting wood as a way to redirect my focus, my energy. And that time spent away from worrying about the problem gave me some resources, gave me some other opportunities. Now, some people might say, well, I'm not going to go out there and cut wood. Well, I've found some very good and intelligent people that have shared with me uh, the mechanics uh, the right application of cutting wood um, have allowed me to understand the different types of wood, right? You've got black oak, you've got birch, you've got maple, you've got cherry, and they all burn differently. And for those of you who are in the barbecue business, who love to smoke, that's a whole other world. That's a whole other community. Well, guess what? Then now I've got a whole other group of people that I can share my experience with, and they share theirs. That allows me not to get bogged down by the problem at hand. Because let's face it, you're going to have another problem. 
this is not your first problem, right? This is not your first challenge. So when I think of, and I use the term, tighten your sphincter muscle, it's to get away, redirect your thoughts, your, your sense of frustration. Um, you know, in psychology, we talk about pain and suffering, right? Pain is when your life changes and if you're disrupted. Suffering is when you don't believe there's an answer. That's a dangerous place. So before you get there, tighten the sphincter muscle. Go cut some wood. Sell it. I make about $45 an hour. And I'm in my backyard. I'm not having to worry about social distancing. I have a great schmores. <laughs> I make great schmores. Um, it, it's, it's, it opens you up the ability to redirect your mind in times of challenges, of fear, of frustration, of receiving negative news. The ability to redirect your mind can open you up to opportunities that are you wouldn't think about, um, and I'm thinking of a word that we used the other day in Toastmasters, and I can't, I can't recall it, but it's basically saying, if you put yourself out there, earnestly put yourself out there, things, other forces, other energies, other people seem to redirect your energy with you for you and you get results that you would not think of so I want you to think about that tighten your sphincter muscle cut some wood <laughs> and uh, look for solutions look for solutions in other areas look for solutions from other people young old it doesn't matter it's a state of mind Check out our website, ronaldmallen.com, for services. We have a ton of new support uh, information now that's uh, being, shall I say, um, uh, correlated. Of course, we have the online learning. We still have the one course. In fact, I was just talking to the curriculum developer. She's down in Texas, wonderful lady, Angela Lee, who has been doing this for other corporations for a while. And we're pulling together our second course. Um, we have some great new audio files, I must admit, some really great audio files, and they're very short, 60 seconds, 170 words, almost like an audio Twitter, and I know some people have been asking me to get on TikTok, um, but I can't be on every single social media platform there is, even though TikTok is the big new gorilla in the room. <laughs> so check those out for us. Um, your comments are always welcome. This is all about managing life's changes and everyone's perspective is absolutely crucial at this time. Obviously, we ask for you, ask you to be respectful on any of these platforms, otherwise we just remove you. <laughs> so, this is Ronald Allen managing change through effective communications in my backyard. You know where to find me.